I want to talk about Dustin Smog. Um, a friend of mine was just looking at properties around the Philippines and he's spent a bit of time in Cebu recently, since Cebu City, and he was saying he couldn't live there because of the dust and smog. I agree with him, but I don't live in Cebu City itself, I live further south. But the, the point being that Cebu City has a lot of vehicles belching dust and smoke. Um, see, the funny thing is, the Philippines does have its anti-CO2 regulations, etc. But nine times out of ten, you can pay somebody 200 pesos extra when it goes in for its test, and they will just let it pass. Um, I'm not saying that because I'm trying to pick on somebody, but I know people do it. But the, the, the problem you get is that when you're going, because I, I normally like to go by a motorbike because it's the fastest way through Cebu. Um, there's a layer of dust that sits on the roads and when the cars and vehicles go over it, it just pushes it up into the air. At night, when you see car headlights, you can see all this dust and smoke in the air. You know, you, it's not so visual during the day. Um, but there's so much pollution there. Um, the same with... It's why I, when I get home, first thing I do, whether I've been in the city, strip off hit the shower and wash the layer of dust and smog off me because you can feel it on your skin you know it's, it's it's quite intense but for the average expat they don't live in Cebu City I know some do some live in like uh, the condos at Ayala Mall because you've got the big mall in the middle then there's all these apartment blocks around the outside of it a lot of people don't even go any further than that you know that is Cebu to them they, they don't venture out except to the airport to go back to the west but you'll find other expats like myself are just on the outskirts. It's not actually in Cebu City. Well, I say outskirts is probably 30 minutes from Cebu City um, by, by car or motorbike. That distance um, is not so bad. You know, once you get to the outer, outer rims of the, the metropolis, it's not so bad, you know, because it's not got the same intensity of dust, etc. But you do get a lot of pollution in the Philippines. The rivers become very congested with plastic bags. Um, there's an obsession with plastic bags. I haven't got any action because we don't use them, you see. Um, but you'll go into a shop. You'll have like a small item, just one item. They'll put it in one plastic bag. And then they'll fold it and then they'll staple the receipt to it. But if it's a very small bag, they'll they'll staple it, then put it in another bag. So you get two bags for an item that's only this size, and you didn't actually need any bags whatsoever. There's an obsession there. Um, there's a paranoia of theft, I think, because they put the receipts on the outside because it's very visual that you paid for something. So be aware, plastic is clogging up the rivers. It frustrates me, but what can you do about it? If somebody has a, an idea on how to do it, uh, preferably already in the country and proactively trying to change things, I'll happily promote it. Um, so you got all these plastic bags. This is why when I go south, you might have heard me say about the rivers changing, because like with Mingo Nilia and Hennings out, the rivers are clogged up with plastics. Then you get a bit further down and it starts to go green. I'm not sure why the water's green, but it is. It's like a foggy green color. And then when you get even further south, it starts becoming stunningly beautiful, you know, clear waters. And I did a video, um, I'll try and add the link in here, because I'm sat on the harbor and I can actually see the fish below me. You know, it's that clear. So I'll see if I can find the video on that, just to show you how nice it can be. But the nearer the city you get, the less infrastructure that it goes on. Um, I used to have a guy that used to write some of the posts for my Tropical Pen Pals blog. Um, he lived in a huge, uh, large fishing um, cottage. Really nice place. But when it all started to change is when the, the village population grew and then they put this like sewage line 
they basically washed all the crap from the village under his house. You know, disgusting. Um, but there's no, a lot of it's not treated. This is the problem. You know, there's a lot of septic tanks, but there's a lot of stuff going in in the actual river system that, in the West, you would actually find yourself heavily fined for doing. Um, frustration. Um, it can be like household waste. It can be something um, more toxic. But the point being, there's a lot of pollution. So when you're looking for somewhere to live, you've got to take these things into consideration. If you want city living, be aware that all the vehicles are belching out toxic fumes. And because of the traffic jam and stuff like that, there's a lot more of the toxic fumes in the air because, you know, cause vehicles are sitting. Um, also, from my own experience, the kids used to get sick a lot more in the Philippines. Um, you talk about being sick for something every six weeks. You know, um, they'll be used to using an inhaler, for example. Coming to Spain, rarely sick. I mean, they haven't had one day off school. Um, in fact, I can't actually say there's been a day where they go, oh, they're sick. But they might have a, the odd cold or fever here, but it's only like for a day. In the Philippines, it could be for two weeks. And um, I think it's all to do with the fumes. The other thing you get is people brush up all the leaves and all the rubbish. Um, and they'll burn around five o'clock, well, you know, as it starts to get dark. It's because all that smoke forces away the mosquitoes. That's why they do it. But the other problem is they still they brush up the plastic with it. They brush up any crap that they don't want and they burn it with everything else. So you've then got all these houses and whatever burning um, crap of some description. It's a problem. Um, you may get used to it. And a lot of you guys, um, probably like me, I mean, I don't, I don't want to live to 100 anyway. But with being further on in life, um, you're not really fussed about some of these problems that do come along because you're probably not going to live long enough for them to be effect, you know, affect you. Because they may take 30 years or whatever. And do we really think want to think 30 years ahead? Probably not. I couldn't care less in that time, to be honest. You know, there's... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not being negative, it's just the fact is, you know, the, the average person doesn't, you know, they, they're about today, or in the recent times, they're not. That's why we do crazy things like mix concrete and cement, etc., and then trundle around in it in flip-flops when we should have wellies on to stop the burns. People still do it. I mean, my construction workers do it, and you're like... And they've been doing it for the last, I don't know, 40 plus years. <laughs> they still it's old habits, you see. So you do get this sort of thing where like, I'm not really worried about it. But it's stuff to be aware of. Because when you look around and you go, oh, this is a nice area. See what it's like when it's, can, you know, rush hour, etc. Is there a lot of traffic there? Is there a lot of smoke? What protects your house from the smoke? Is your house well sealed? Because a lot of places I know have got open eaves. You know, where the roof goes in and there's a little gap at the bottom. If it's a cheap house, those eaves are often open. Um, which A, you get birds in, but B, uh, you get other bugs through. Uh, and also, you can get the smoke go up and in. Just something to think about. Uh, personally, in my house, it's all double glazed, etc. So it's not really an issue with us. And also, we don't live in the city. We, we live away from it. But it is something to consider. Um, but the average expat doesn't live in Cebu City. The average expat is provincial more than anything else. They will trundle along to the city and they like to be not too far from the cities, but at the same time, they like the quiet life of being in the middle of nowhere and having a meet up with a few people once a week or whatever. Or well, in my case, I'm quite happy once every three months to six months. <laughs> um, so. They're living a local life, so for them, 
uh, it's not too much of a problem because they're out of all the places with the heavy smoke and dust. Alright, thanks for watching.